Hello everyone and welcome back to the next part, part 5 of my low set guide and this one is going to deal with trading. Trading items, selling items, buying items. This is all going to be about the merchant man and how they can survive on the frontier. This is going to be a pretty in-depth video. There's a lot of nuances that go along uh, with trading and I'm going to try and cover most of them that covers those specifically to low sec. Now trading can be a lot of things. Trading can be station trading. It could be sitting in Jita or Amar or uh, Dodixie and just trading items without even stepping out of the station, without even undocking basically. There are several players that do that and they're very good at that. I particularly am not one of them. I don't have the skill set to do that. There are very good video guides on how to do that. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, but uh, that's not what this video is going to cover. This is going to be specifically about trying to do this in low sec. Now, the thing about low sec is that there are certain challenges and there are certain advantages. And when you trade really in low sec, null sec, really anywhere, this is something that has to be thought out in, in pretty good depth here. And there are certain criteria that you have to think about. So trading very simply is a buying an item at the low price usually at a, a regional or market hub such as Jita or Renz or uh, Amar and those are typically the places where you have the lowest cost if you're going to buy it outright without manufacturing it the item that you buy in a high competition area namely high sec is going to have what we call a very low margin that's a very low profit margin on the item above its manufacturing cost not saying that there's no margin if there's no margin then by economic theory no one will do it but sometimes economic theory doesn't really apply to eve online but in most cases it does so really high sec when you think of high sec that is a low margin high volume uh space low sec and null sec are different those are going to be high margin low volume in low sec or null sec particularly uh low sec because in null sec you typically have captured markets those are markets that are captured by large alliances but in low sec you know stations are free and open and you have the customer base that either lives in that area or transiting through that area so that is the key thing when you approach low sec is that okay i'm not going to sell a lot but i'm going to sell at a high profit and to a very specific customer base so this is where things are going to get a little bit um i won't say complicated but they're going to be uh, on a certain track when you think of your customers you think about selling items to your customers well what are your customers this is the key point and this leads to uh, answering three main questions. Is what do you sell? Where do you sell? How much do you sell? And to whom do you sell? You know, so those are the very key questions on how you sell items really in low sec, null sec, and frankly anywhere. But particularly in those areas because you don't have a high volume of traffic or the high volume of traffic is very specific, i.e. faction warfare. So... The thing about items is this, in EVE Online, particularly ships, uh, most equipment and even ammunition to a certain extent are empire specific. So as you can see here, there are ships to name the four main empires, Amar, Kaldari, Galente, and Mimitar. Your customer base could be flying one of the ships, able to fly two of the ships, could be flying all four of the ships. You don't know, nor do you know what their preferences are. Maybe they want to fly only Kaldari ships, or maybe they uh, want to have the high DPS and high Alpha Strike and Mimitar ship. You know, you don't know exactly what they want. So can you offer everything? Can you offer all four empires, uh, plus uh, more specialty ships, such as ore ships, or more recently, the Triglavian ships? No, no one can cover that whole base. So you have to be very specific when you, when you come down and try and think about what you're trying to sell. That is the most important thing. What do you sell? How much do you sell? And where do you sell? As I mentioned before. When you sell particularly ships and items, it helps to go in 
in the method of think of like a pizza. When you order a pizza, you order the pizza and you order the toppings. You don't just order the dough and the tomato sauce and nothing else. And you don't order just the toppings and have no pizza to put it on. They have to come together, right? So the more complex of a system you try to sell, i.e. the more ships that need unique types of equipment that need a longer list of skills, the lower your customer base or smaller your customer base is going to be. That is one thing to really keep in mind. So as a starting merchantman, and this is going to be giving out a little, probably a few trade secrets here, it really helps start with items that are a small, that are not skill dependent, and that can reach the, reach the largest customer base. So what items are those? Well, they're not ships, if you're wondering. Those, they are not ships, but it can be things like drones, which, okay, they have some specific skills, but you can take any drone and put it into any drone bay. It could be things that uh, are manufacturing related, such as fuel blocks. You know, any station or any citadel can use fuel blocks. It could be materials for uh, logistics, such as uh, ice. Uh, ice isotopes that can be used uh, for partic particular ships for transit ships yes you know particular capital ships can only use a particular type of isotope but it is only reduced down to four so you know you can ha actually run a way station basically like a, um, a gas station a gas station in low sec and things like that when you start going to ships and ship equipment then you go into the area that is much more complex and you really need to know your customer base and what they do and what they can use. So the same rule applies when you go into ship equipment, you want to focus on equipment, maybe at first that, uh, are you, that is universal, you know, so things such as, um, maybe propulsion upgrades, um, damage controls, uh, afterburners, micro warp drives, uh, shield and armor. Again, those can reach to almost any ship in, in the EVE cluster. And by doing that, that is how you maximize your customer base that is available. The other thing is, is that these modules are not very big. You can fit a lot into a blockade runner, which I've mentioned before. So, you know, looking at propulsion, you can say, okay, I want, um, Micro warp drives, actually that's a micro jump drive, micro warp drives. You could see here, and you can see you know, how many are available. But the, the other thing is, and as you can see here in the mold and heat region, uh, you could also have a lot of competition because what applies to you is gonna to apply to everyone else. So you gotta look for those areas that uh, have a demand and no one's meeting that demand. Moving from there, if you don't find that, it's time to move up maybe one level. Okay, so someone's already providing your micro warp drives. Someone's already providing your your basic necessities to fill out a ship. You know, they have your damage control units, they have your nanite paste, they have drones, they have all like that. Well, you can use that. There's nothing that says that you have to cover everything. You go up to the next level. Okay, now you can start to offer specialized more specialized equipment because you don't have to cover those bases. That's where you can get into things like ships and things like that. It really depends on the market. How well serviced is that market? If you see a market that's completely barren, right? You don't want to come in offering specialty equipment such as uh, ships that require particular skill sets, such as interceptors or heavy assault cruisers. You want to start with the bases and let the market build itself up. Once it has that basic platform of things such as micro warp drives and things like that, you know, smart bombs, shields, drones, uh, then you can say, okay, well, someone has that market. Do I want to compete with that or do I want to build on top of that? And then you can start looking at things such as, you know, maybe more specialty equipment such as uh, turrets, missiles, missile launchers, um, uh, weapon upgrades, uh, ECM equipment, all those things can, can be used. And those goes with, yeah, they go with specific type of ships, but you want to uh, make sure that uh, those ships are actually going to be sold in that region. And that's one key trick here. 
Selling ships is very different than selling equipment. So everything that I've gone through right now is dealing with small equipment that you can fit into a blockade runner. Like you see here, you can fit quite a lot into a blockade runner. Ships are a very different story. So ships are huge. And even a blockade runner here, I can fit, I think I can fit maybe five frigates at the most. Uh, let's see here. I think I can just barely squeeze five frigates in. That's not a lot. <laughs> five frigates of what? That could be five frigates of anything. The thing about ships and high volume equipment is that you cannot transport them directly. What you can transport, however, in a much easier fashion, are the building materials to build those ships. So, this is where a larger skill set is going to come into play. You need to be able to put the materials and bring the materials on site to where you're going to set up your trade location. Once you have a trade location scouted out where, okay, you see some of the basic equipment, you see some of this, you see maybe, uh, you know, it's decently well stocked or you can cover the shortfall of modules and maybe rigs and things like that. Hmm. Now market's pretty good there. Now we can go into ships. Those are very low volume, a very high margin because typically when someone wants a ship and they don't want to hike it all the way back in the high sec to buy it, they are willing to pay a premium in order to save time. Time is the key commodity in EVE Online. As, as I mentioned in my five uh, tips and tricks for busy people, time is the main commodity, not ISK. ISK, one can get fairly easily, but time is something that people are willing to, to pay ISK in order to save and, and convenience. That is where you, as the trader is gonna come in. So, what does that mean? What that means is, is that if you can build out your skill set to things that are more manufacturing related, yeah, where you can do uh, refining and procure and uh, manufacturing, and you get some initial blueprints, blueprint copies, you don't have to buy the originals, blueprint, blueprint copies are fairly cheap, then you can actually build the ship on site and sell the ship in the market. So it is much easier to uh, transport manufacturing materials such as you know, minerals materials uh, particularly the uh, compressed ores which is uh, standard ores you know it could be anything you know even veldspar concentrated veldspar again let me actually take off the filter so compressed dense veldspar for example run the numbers you can pick those items up in high sec transport them out to your location, refine them down if you have a good refining skills, and take those raw materials and just build the ships that you need in order to sell them. Don't build 50 of the same ship and hope to sell them. Just build maybe three or four and then keep the rest of your materials in its base form. You keep the minerals in titanium, in isogen, in noxium, and things that you keep those on the side and you only build as needed to refill the market. So, if you want to go into ship building and ship trading in low sec, you simply cannot haul out the ships unless you have something like a jump freighter. And a jump freighter is going to easily eat up the profit margin you sell, in particularly Tech 1 ships, and in many cases, Tech 2 ships. So, you want to make sure that it's, you have the materials. It's much easier to move the base materials out to low sec and build what you need that the market may want rather than just setting the ship out by itself and you don't sell it, well then what do you do with it, right? You want to keep your inventory low and your base materials high. For Tech 2 ships, okay, it's the same thing, but it's going to be added layer of complexity. You're going to need uh, materials, uh, advanced components, and you also have to bring out a lot of advanced components as well. Again, you can, you can order them in high sec, put them into a blockade runner, Put them in a transport and get them out to low sec and just build the ships that you want to sell maybe in two and threes and things like that but don't go whole hog and just build out your whole inventory and it's like oh my god i got so much inventory how am i going to sell it okay now with ships how do you sell ships this is where knowledge of the local area becomes key are you dealing with pirates 
are dealing with, with uh, customers that use a lot of cloaky ships, then you want to deal with cloaky ships, you know, things such as uh, forced recon ships, uh, particularly uh, maybe stealth bombers, you know, and things like that. Well, okay, well, which empire do I do I sell? Here is where a real judgment call has to be made. One thing that can help is look at the type of rats that are in the area. If it's dealing with Mimitar rats, there may be a slight skew of, of the more PvE players to using ships that go against those particular rats. So maybe a Mimitar space, maybe you could sell a few more Mimitar ships than other ships. The other ones, it just comes down to experience. This is one of the reasons why I recommend trying everything uh, before you go and being a merchantman. If you are a former pirate, if you're a former faction warfare, if you're a former um, alliance person, if you're a former explorer, then you know what ships you need to be sell sold. Okay, I was in faction warfare. Okay, I know I need uh, in a faction warfare zone. Okay, we need DPS ships. I need uh, maybe technology ships. I need destroyers. But I don't need to go and buy marauders. I don't need to go and buy even heavy assault ships. You know, these are ships that you know, live fast, die young type of ships, not necessarily ones that, you know, are titanic. You don't need capital ships even, okay? Well, for a pirate, okay, all right, well, now I need maybe some more pirate type of ships like um, syllables or uh, pirate faction ships. It could be interceptors. It could be uh, stealth bombers. It could be uh, things like that. One particular class of ship that most people, and again, this is gonna be another trade secret, but everyone almost seems to forget our industrial ships. How many times, I have forgotten how many times I was either in low sec or null sec, and I opened the screen, it's like, you know, I just need a tech one transport just to move something, and there's nothing there. Transports are so important to move anything, even for pirates, even for anybody, that it's almost forgotten. So industrial ships, you know, if you could even pull up a Minmatar, you know, don't use any of the um, specialty ships like the Hoarder. Just use some of the standard ships like, for example, the Mammoth or the Wreath. You know, some that can put just normal items in. They don't have those specialty uh, bays that are great on those particular ships, but they can just help move items around because those are almost universal. Most industrial pilots will have at least the base Tech 1 industrial ship skilled up if they're out in low sec or null sec, or at least they should because, you know, we don't, sometimes beggars can't be choosers and we can only choose the ships that are on the market. This is where you come in. You want to make sure you have available ships here. Let's take a look at your know, Molden Heath here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of wreaths, but they're all eight jumps away from where I'm at. Now that's a long hike, particularly in a Tech 1 ship where you know, some of these things tend to be blown up more often than not. This is actually an opportunity here. I could say, all right, you know what? There's some wreaths. Uh, well, let's take a look at some of the other ones. Um, Nereus. Okay, now here, some was smart enough. They filled up the market with the Galente Nereus. Yeah, but doesn't mean I come in, can't come in and put it. Okay, well, that's that's great for the Nereus. Uh, Inner Mark V. Okay, there's five. You know, some five jumps away, but maybe they need some Interon Mark V, so some Madness, or some um, Treyas, or things like that. Those are ships that always tend to be forgotten. The other one is ore ships, or um, mining barges, and things like that. The nice thing about ore ships and mining barges is that they are uh, almost universal. They have a universal skill set. If someone's doing that particular activity, they like to have these mining barges. So there are certain ships, such as industrial ships, ore ships, that are more universal and they're not as constrained as they are with the empire ships. And if you're going to sell empire ships, you're probably going to need to sell at least one of a particular category, like say interceptors. And I was like, well, I don't exactly know who's going to buy these interceptors, but they're going to choose one of these four empires. Well, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and put one of four. Now, that can be a challenge if you start building it from base materials, as I mentioned before, because now you need advanced components across all four empires. There's a trade-off here, and that trade-off is maybe you want to focus on just one or two and kind of go with the notion and say, hey, you know, if someone's flying an interceptor, maybe they have the uh, skills to fly a different empire interceptors. But if they do... You also want to make sure that the market has the modules to fit out that interceptor or they're just buying a base hull and that doesn't do anyone any good. 
So, anyways, that is my video for starting a market, starting a store, or what to trade, how to trade when you go into Lulzsec. Uh, I hope this has been uh, a big help. This is something that can make a lot of money. I have made a lot of money off of uh, trading in Lulzsec. It can be sometimes a little frustrating when you, okay, you open your market and you're all excited and no one buys anything. But you know what? Stick to it. Learn the region, learn the customers, and over time, you'll learn how to do this correctly. But don't, don't overcommit. Don't go whole hog in. Just start with a few things and fill yourself out. Every market is different. What I see in Mold and Heath is not going to be true in Iridia or a different type of low-sec market. Everyone is unique. And learning that market is the key to being a, key, a great merchant in low-sec. Anyways, I hope this helps everyone. Again, I'm sorry for a little bit long tutorial here, but there's a lot of things to go over, a lot of different strategies. And I hope this has been a big help to you. And uh, just let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Take care, guys. Good luck. And I will talk to you soon. Fly safe.